screencast here is going to cover chapter two in InDesign, lessons one and two. And there's a, quite a bit we need to do in here today, and it's going to be dealing a lot with text. Like I said in the last lesson, that InDesign is primarily used to do layouts and, and, and work with text quite a bit. It, does, it works with text a lot better than Photoshop does as far as arrangements. Uh, let's go ahead and open a data file. And let's open our data file, chapter 2, 2-1.indd. Uh, once we've opened up, let's do a Command Shift S and let's save this in our classwork video, uh, classwork folder as min pin intro. Min pin intro. Okay, so we're going to be working with text and all the text on this document. So the first thing we're going to do is change our workspace. So let's go to Window Workspace and make sure it's on Typography. If it's not, then do it there. Let's go to our text tool. With our text tool selected, let's go and select Introducing in the green box up at the top. There are several ways that you can select something. For example, if I just single click it, it puts the cursor inside the word. If I double click it, it highlights the whole word. If I triple click it, it highlights the entire sentence. So the selections become more key now than they ever have been because we're working with so much text at one point in time. Let's go ahead and select the entire top line. So triple click and let's go to the characters palette so characters palette over here on the right and in our characters palette let's go ahead and change our font family and our font is going to be impact so <clears throat> impact is in the eyes if you just type in I am with your keyboard it should light it up uh, if you're continually scrolling on your font um, you're wasting time. If you know the font is impact, I am. Hit enter. Automatically brings up impact. The idea is to start getting faster at doing these types of things. Let's change our font size from 12 to 48. 12 to 48. And what we're going to look at now is changing what's called the leading value. So in our characters palette over here, we've got our font size, kerning, tracking, and leading. We're going to be working with these four. So let's come over here to our our, um, our lead and there's a hotkey for it. Um, I'm going to just click down on it first though just, just to kind of change it. Um, or we could just type it in. Let's go ahead and type in 57.6. <clears throat> Now, hold these keys down. Hold down Command, Shift, and then use using the greater than or less than symbols. Notice how this changes the size of font that you have when I'm selected on the actual text. We're going to keep it at 48. We're going to leave our lead at 57.6. Let's triple click on the um, on the second line. I might have actually just removed that line. Let's go ahead and take introducing min pin. Do this for me. Introducing min pin. Drop it to 46 point impact, so we can actually see by Christopher Smith. We want to be able to see it. If you can't see that, just do a command Z to undo. So we're going to select uh, by Christopher Smith. And we're going to change the font to what's called Adobe Garment Pro. So I'm going to type in ADO. So Adobe. And if you can't find it, and I couldn't find it because there's so many Adobe's, what I might need to do is go find the G's. So I'm going to scroll up to my G's here. And Adobe Garment. If you can't find this, just go pick one. Adobe Garment Pro, and I'm going to do Italic. So whatever I want to do, I want the italic version of that. How I did that, I just went to my, my font. I found Adobe Garment, and there was a, a, a side-out um, arrow that allowed me to pick the type of it. Italic. There's other ways to do that, but that's just a little easier to do it that way. And let's change our font size to 18. Notice it's not like Photoshop where we could click and drag on the font right here. I kind of have to actually make a, a solid selection. Let's go to the Selection tool. 
on the selection tool, if you're inside that text box, even if I'm outside of it, notice when I click on it, it highlights the entire text, what's called a frame, the text frame. Let's go to object on the menu. Let's go down to text frame, object, text frame options right here. And in that box, we need to make sure we got things um, kind of set here. We want to align center. So in this box, the vertical justification, which also means vertical alignment. So where do I want this vertically? I want it centered. Notice how it changes when you click OK. The text now appears in the middle of your box. That's a vertical. Horizontal will be left and right, verticals up and down. Let's go to the zoom tool. The zoom tool is over here underneath the hand tool. It looks like a magnifying glass. And there's a couple ways we can, we can use this zoom tool. If I take the zoom tool and I highlight a box like this around my green box, it's going to zoom me into that particular area. So now I can focus more on that, <clears throat> on that area. I'm going to go the, to the text tool now. Now that I'm on the text tool, I'm going to triple click the word introducing. Triple click the word introducing. And now that I'm here, I'm going to go back to my Characters palette. On my Characters palette, I'm going to go over to the Tracking. And Tracking is going to be here, which is the A and the V here, pushing away. This is the distance between letters. I'm going to just click the drop-down arrow and select 200. Notice that the space between each letter spread out farther. That's called Tracking. Let's take that Tracking back to 25. 256.25. So they're spread out a little bit, but not as much as it, as, it, as it was. Now kerning, on the other hand, if you look down here where it says A, V, push together, this is kerning. And kerning works when you have it, your cursor between two different letters. For example, put your cursor between the H and the E, and the. And if you come over here to your kerning and click down to get a negative, that brings the letters together and eventually they overlap. I'm going to end up on about negative 30. So you can change the space between. So if something looks too far out compared to the rest, you can change that particular space uh, as you like. Okay, I'm going to make sure I highlight the entire introducing min pin and I'm going to change my font from 46 to, oh, I'm going to manually type this one. Let's do 42. There we go. 42, just so I get in, uh, introducing the min pin all on one line, <clears throat> all on one line. Do a command S to save, and we're gonna keep working here. I'm gonna <clears throat> zoom out here, so I'm gonna do a command minus. <clears throat> the other way to do that would be to go to view, fit page in window. If I do view, fit page in window, I can see my entire document. Now, if you look at this particular document, what it is, is it's a group of paragraphs. And you can see down at the bottom that there are a couple of footnotes. You've probably seen those in books that you've read are footnotes. So there's going to be numbers in the paragraphs that correspond with the numbers down below. But those, those are usually uh, placed in what's called superscript. So if you look here in the, let's see, one, two, fourth paragraph where it says, predates the development of the well-known Doberman Pinscher. Highlight the number one there. With that number one selected, let's go to our characters palette, click the drop down arrow. Here's where I want characters palette, the group drop down arrow, and then select superscript. If I select superscript, then the number one gets placed in the top right corner of the letter R. Now if you look two paragraphs down, it says, and even help herd cows, you see a number two there. Let's take that number two, and let's change that to a superscript as well. So that number two is now superscript. If you look at the actual footnotes where it says uh, Montag and Miltonberg, if I highlight the number one here, we need to superscript that as well. Superscript, and so it matches up. The one matches with the one, and the two matches with the two. So when someone's reading this text, they say Doberman Pinscher, number one, they said, oh, this is a book. This is from some other document. So now let's focus our attention to the footnote. So let's highlight in love with min pin. 
in love with Minpin. Now that's a book, so we need to underline it. So what we're going to do is go to the characters palette, click the drop down arrow up top, and I'm going to select underline, and that underlines it. Working toy breeds, I'm going to highlight working toy breeds in the footnote too, and I'm going to underline that as well. Let's go ahead and change the font of this as well, because footnotes aren't usually as big as the rest of the text. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to select the entire footnote except for the superscript number one. And I'm going to change my font from 12 to 8. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the second footnote. Highlight it, change it from 12 to 8. Just moving along, formatting those. Now we're going to turn our attention to the actual paragraph. Of, of text as well. So I'm going to go up to view on the menu and go to fit page and window just so I can snap out of that and get back to the main part of the document. <clears throat> so let's work with the paragraph. If I click one time, I, uh, twice, I can select a word. Three times, select the entire sentence. If I click five times, I can select the entire paragraph or the entire page. So it's one, two, gets me a word. One, two, three, highlights a sentence. One, two, three, four, selects the paragraph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 selects the entire page. So go ahead and select the, the entire body of text there. And we're going to change what's called our leading list on the characters panel. So on the characters panel over here on the right, go find leading, which is the A on top of the A. And just looking at that, what that tells me is this is going to spread the sentences apart. Kind of like how you do like, um, like a double space between paragraphs. Let's change that to, let's do something extreme. Let's go 30 point. When you go 30 point, it takes the sentences rather than the paragraphs and it splits them 30 points from the top of each to the top and to the bottom of each letter. Now that's probably a little too much, so let's go back to 30 and let's type in 16. Type in 16, it spreads it out just a little bit and makes it a little bit uh, easier to look at. This time let's go over to the right and let's click on the paragraph panel. On the paragraph panel, notice at the top you have lots of alignment tools. There's a center tool, there's a line right, there's an align left. Those are the ones that you're probably used to the most. These next four are called justification alignments. If I justify something, what that does is it spreads the text <clears throat> all the way from the left side of the page to the right side of the page. <clears throat> and it evenly spaces it like a news article. Let's click the first one that says justify with last line aligned left. Once you click that, notice how it creates almost a square around the whole thing. So it spreads that text out and aligns it to where it snaps to each side of the page. Let's select introducing the min pin. And let's center that. Introducing min pin. So introducing min pin is now vertically and horizontally uh, selected. I'm just going to click off to deselect. Now let's apply vertical spacing between certain paragraphs. So let's click on our type tool and click anywhere in the body. And let's do a command A to select all. Notice I was inside the body of the, of the document before I did a command A so I know that I was selecting the entire paragraph, the blocks. Over here on our characters palette, we're gonna be working with the space after up arrow. Actually, it's on the paragraph tool, the space after up arrow. So if you just highlight each one of these little boxes over here and read them, this is our left indent, this is our first line left indent, this is our right indent, and this is our last line right indent. We have one down here, space before, drop cap number of lines, space after, and drop cap one more, one or more characters. So the one I want is right here, it's called space after. And we're gonna click on this until we get to point one eight seven. 5.1875. Notice that that takes the vertical spacing applied to every paragraph. So if I look at it, it changes the distance between the, the lines on the paragraphs. Just another way you can actually change it. Let's select the two footnotes. Drag to select the two footnotes. Notice how those two footnotes are very, very, very far apart. Let's go to the space after on the paragraph, so space after is currently at 1.875 for those two footnotes, we have those two footnotes selected. Let's drop that to zero. 
When I drop that to zero then, the space between those two footnotes is all the way down. Let's click to deselect all. Now let's actually apply some paragraph indents. Now when I work in Microsoft Word or if I work in any word processing program, I like to see things that you normally can't see. InDesign's no different. If I come up to type on the menu and I go down to the very bottom here of the menu where it says show hidden characters, click on that. And we're probably going to leave this on. When I do show hidden characters, I see these blue markers all over the place. This, this right here, this backwards looking P is called a paragraph marker. That represents some, a, a place where a user hit enter. Anytime you hit enter, it puts in a paragraph break. These blue dots, these blue dots here represent spaces. Anytime someone has hit a space. So because this is in a paragraph block, for example, this paragraph, it's separated by a paragraph and a paragraph. It functions as kind of on its own, its own little piece. Let's select the entire body of the document. Not the title, but just the entire body. Let's go to the paragraphs panel and let's change our first line left indent. So if I hover over each one of these, I can read. That's left indent. I don't want that one. I want the first line left indent. And we're going to change that to 0.25. Let's talk about what that did. The first line left indent means that in a paragraph, which is this block here, in a paragraph it takes the first line over 0.25. Not the entire thing, but it indents it over. So typically this is you hitting tab on your computer. You don't really need to hit tab. You can actually tell InDesign how far to set it over. Let's go up to the title box and select the text that says by Christopher Smith. Notice by Christopher Smith is completely to the left underneath the title. And we're going to change that. Let's change that. Um, and that is going to be in the left indent arrow. So left indent this time, not the first line. Our left indent. Let's crank that up to 0.5. That's left indent. And I'm hovering over the box to identify that's left indent. Notice that Christopher Smith is now indented underneath the actual text. Let's go to the third paragraph. And the third paragraph, it's not what you normally think a paragraph would be. The third paragraph means where the marker is. So this one sentence, this is considered a paragraph in InDesign because of that paragraph break. Now let's click anywhere. You don't have to highlight it. You can just click anywhere in that paragraph. Let's click anywhere in that paragraph and let's go to the first line of the first line left indent value. First line left indent value is currently at 0.25. Let's change that to zero inches. Let's change the left indent to 0.75. You can either type that in or you can click it in. 0.75. And let's change the right indent to 0.75. Well, I'm actually going to type this one in 0.75. Enter. So now what I've done is I've centered almost this line. I've offset it from this from the right and I've offset it from the left because it's a quote. And that's typically how you show quotes in a document. Let's make it stand out a little bit more. Let's change the font size. So now I'd be going to the characters palette. Let's change the font size to 18 point. And let's change the leading to 20 point. And that spaces it from the top of the paragraph to the bottom paragraph. It makes it stand out more as a, you know, a, a quote in an actual document. Let's look at a drop cap. Let's come here to the very top of our first paragraph. Click before the letter T for the, the miniature pincher. And let's get on our paragraph panel. And on our paragraph panel, we currently have our first line left indent as 0 0.25. Let's drop that to 0 inches. Now that that is 0 inches, notice that the comes back to the left. With our cursor still there, Let's go to the drop cap number of lines up arrow, which is right here. So let's go find drop cap number of lines. I'm going to go one, two, three. By clicking that, so it says drop cap three, that takes the first letter in the identified paragraph, and I wasn't even selected on it, and it drops it three lines. If I clicked it again to four, it'll put it underneath the four, it'll make it four lines deep. I just want it three. 
So that works a little bit better than trying just to select that one and change the font and move it around. I have InDesign and I where I can just pump that out uh, real easy. So it's at three. Let's go down to the, let's see. Fourth paragraph? No, oh, third, third sentence here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Third sentence in the last paragraph where it says, and yours might look different than mine. The min pin, yeah, last paragraph here where it says, um, I'm just gonna pick a random. If you click anywhere and hit enter one time, notice how it puts a paragraph break and it separates, I'm gonna hit backspace there. If you do a shift enter, Notice that it puts what's called a line break in and it doesn't put a paragraph. I'm going to do command Z. So if you have on the other hand, you see how my on the other hand is on its own, kind of starting a new sentence? You do a shift enter. Keep that on its own line. If yours is already there, that's cool. But if yours is uh, snapped up to a different line, uh, then we need to change that. So there's a difference between a paragraph break and a line break. Okay, do a command S to save. And this is going to wrap up chapter two, lesson one and two.